So I did a video a while back on the Husqvarna Viking Designer SE sewing machine that uh, has the flashing light of death. So you'll see these, these lights right here flashing and the machine that's when you turn it on and just kind of these flash this uh, screen stays dim and the machine just uh, doesn't work and once this happens the only way to fix that is to um, either replace the motherboard in here or you can repair the motherboard and I did uh, two videos that showed you the repair of the, vi the, the sewing machine and actually the first video I believe was my first video on the, on the channel. So the quality was a little bit low on that. And um, I also missed a few things that people tend to ask me about because I sell a kit. It looks just like this uh, when you buy the kit with the capacitors. So these are what go bad on that motherboard and you can repair it yourself if you're comfortable with soldering on components to a motherboard, which not everybody is. But I have a video where I go through that process as well. Uh, some of the things that I include in the kit are, you know, some written instructions that give you links to my website that has some instructions on it. And then I also give you a drawing. This is a drawing. It's actually the same drawing I made on that video. I just made a copy of it and I throw it in there. Um, all this to show you that, hey, you know, this is something that I, I sell. I, I did it kind of as a, uh, hey, let's see if anybody actually needs this. So far I've sold over 70 of these kits, which amazes me. Um, so I figured I'd go back and do another video showing you some of the uh, intricacies of taking this machine apart because it's not a straightforward machine to take apart. Uh, one thing I did realize, it, recently I did a uh, an older Husqvarna Viking, probably one from the 1990s or so, and taking it apart is very similar to taking this one apart, which I thought was kind of amazing. Even the same tools, so they have remained um, very um, consistent with how they make machines so you take them apart. To take apart Husqvarna Designer, SE sewing machine and most Husqvarna sewing machines, you need two tools. You need a Torx T10 and a T20. Those two tools will get you into most Husqvarna Viking sewing machines. I keep these two at the top of my tool bag and most of these machines, this is all I need. Now you will need like a flathead screwdriver to get your needle out and your um, presser foot off. But as far as getting inside the machine, these two tools will get you there. We will remove our presser foot. There we go. You don't have to remove all of this stuff to get the machine open so that can stay where it is. Now we want to turn the machine on its back and get behind or underneath the machine. So down here there are a couple of screws but you don't have to remove all of them. The screws that you need to remove are four screws in the corner. One, two, three, and four. So these three right here hold the main case of the frame. So these two are for your power supply. We're gonna leave them in there right now. Later on, we are gonna to have to remove these two, but uh, for right now, we wanna leave them in there so that we can disconnect the power supply electrically and then come and remove those. And I'm using the T20 for these screws. We've got the little bit of a larger head on them. So four screws, they're all identical. I'm a big fan of Viking and how they 
put their machines together. I think I've already told you that. And I hope so for the amount of money that they charge for these machines. Now we're gonna go to our smaller, the T10. So we have two, four, six, seven of these smaller screws. Those are all the screws on the outside of the machine. There's gonna be a couple more once we get inside. But now we have all the screws off that we need to in order to get inside the machine. Okay, you see, you see the take up lever right here, how it's all the way up? You don't want it all the way up because if you look behind it, it's covering the plastic there on the front, so you want it to be down. So we bring it down a little bit so it's not covering this plastic right up here. I'll show you that one more time. So if it's all the way up, see how it's covering? And that's gonna hit. So we bring it down. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take the back off of this machine. The back can be tricky. There are two pieces, so we've got the piece that goes across here, and then there's another piece that goes across here. This piece right here also has to come out. So what I do is I'll grab it and I'll pull, and I just use my fingernails there. You can use a pry tool if you want, a plastic pry tool. I found these online and I use them from time to time. Uh, and then we want to pull. Okay, so now we'll get our plastic pry tool over here and just do that. Get it to come out a little bit on that side. And then we're gonna use our plastic pry tool over here on this side. Let's, so I just pulled the knob off so that it's not holding in anything. You want this up, actually this doesn't matter. So now we can just kind of bring it out. Okay, the back, there is nothing connected to it. So it comes right off. There we go. Now we're into the back of the machine. This piece right here, I would like to get it off and it's connected. So this is for your embroidery arm, connects right here. So there's a whole bunch of connections right here. I have broken one of these in the past and had to repair it. It's not fun. So I don't recommend you break it. The little tab right here. And what I do is I just take a little screwdriver and pry that tab down. And that way I can lift it up on this side. And I gotta do it again. So we lift it up and it comes right out. Now we've got two pieces off. Now that I've got those two pieces off, this is the power supply I was talking about that has two screws holding it in and I'm gonna keep it in there for now. And I have two more screws that are holding on the front panel. So these two screws hold on the front panel. There's also something in here that catches. So there's a little plastic piece that goes across here. First, we're gonna take our T20 and remove the last two screws. One of them's a short one, one of them's a long one. If you don't know which one went where, so the long one came from this side over here, closest to the motor. But if you don't know, just try the short one in both. The short one is gonna go in here and just get, not do anything, right? So try the short one first. And if it doesn't go in, then that's the one that needs the long one. Okay, now we have the top freed up from this machine. So the top moves. What I'm gonna do is leave this in here, but I'm going to show you 
how to make sure that it doesn't get ripped out. Because what's ripping it out is your needle threader. If you see that moving up and down, that needle threader goes up above this plastic and it will rip it out. So if I lower the needle threader while I pull this off, then I'm not going to rip this out. So let's continue on. This is where I want to grab the bottom of this and push up and pull. Okay. Now it's come free right here and across here and down here. So it's come free and now it's able to slide. So that was pretty easy to do, but if you don't know that little trick, this is really hard to take off. So now I don't want my top, that plastic piece, to be ripped out. So I'm going to pull down my needle threader while I pull this off. Um, the other thing, let me bring you around. Hopefully this gives you a better view of what I'm doing. So when I'm pulling this off, this part right here needs to be pulled out. I need to have my needle threader down. So now you can see how that's going up and it's catching behind this little plastic piece across, going across. So I need the needle threader down. I need to pull out here and just pull it back. And then once I'm clear, which I am, then I can come out and bring this the rest of the way slowly. Because now we have wires to undo. All right, now I've got you on aerial view. And you can see what I'm seeing when I pull this apart. So I've pulled it apart and now I've got a whole bunch of connectors. And I want to make sure they get back to the place that they're supposed to be. So I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. Um, this connector right here is unlike any other one, so I can just pull that off. It's going to go back to the right place. Okay, these two are very similar, so I'm going to get out my black Sharpie. And I colored in the red connector on the motherboard. And then if you look, you've got these two connectors that look very similar. So one of these, I'm going to take my black Sharpie and I'm going to mark here. Just so I know where that one goes. So now I'm confident I can take off these top connectors, including this one, because this one doesn't match any other one. So I'm going to hold this. I'm going to take these out. Can you see? No. Nope. I'm going to take these out. Just kind of wiggle it. Be very gentle. We're not done yet. We're going to take this one out. Again, gentle. Now, if you look down here, you have this one. Now these connectors are all very similar. So what I do is for the one on the right, which is, I mean, this is the only one going to the front cover, right? Remember all these connectors are gonna come off at some point. So this one is going to come off right there. And now the front cover is off. I usually don't mark this one, but I've done this a few times. So what the other thing you can do, and what I do a lot, is I'll take a picture before I pull all these connectors off. I'll take a picture with my camera. That way I know where everything goes. I have those pictures on my camera already, so I, don't, I didn't take them for this particular one. Now that we've got that off, we need two circuit cards out of here. We need this front circuit card right here, and we need the one in the power supply back here. So now we have more connectors that we have to deal with. So as I'm looking at this, these connectors go down, they go up. One thing that gets messed up quite a bit, if you look at these two connectors right here, this one and this one, they are identical. They're actually identical to this third one that was over here. And each one of these goes to one of the stepper motors in this machine. 
And the stepper motors do things like your feed advance or your needle position, things like that. So when you're a machine, you put it back together and it's doing weird things like sewing backwards or, or not advancing fabric or not doing the right needle position, you have swapped some of these. If you notice, this bottom one goes up and the top one goes down. That's why it gets messed up a lot because people think that if it's coming from the bottom, it must go to the bottom. Well, that's not the case. All right, once you get all those connectors off of the front of the board, you gotta remember that there is one connector on the back of the board. And we're gonna use our T20, which, um, as a side note, another thing I noticed on that 1990s Husqvarna Viking is the, the way that they attach the circuit card inside there is exactly the same as this. Had a little spring tension device right here had another screw over here. It's amazing. And what they're doing is, hey, it worked. So why mess with it, right? Now I think that these were a little closer together, so I don't I don't believe that that will um I don't believe the part is exactly the same part. But I bet you the screws are the same screws. So again, when you're taking this apart and putting it back together, this right here is to hold this component, which gets very hot against that aluminum frame right there. So this little spring holds it against the, the aluminum so that it can dissipate all the heat that it creates while driving that motor. All right. So now we pulled our circuit card assembly off and it's down here. The only thing left is this right here. This is what goes to the motor to provide power to the motor. And I did have a customer who called me and said their motor was operating backwards. And this right here will cause that. So if you look, when you pull this out, it's polarized. So you wanna make sure that it stays up and down how you pulled it out. So I'm gonna do this so you can see. So it pulls straight out and the wire with the red stripe is on the bottom. So that's positive is on the bottom. Okay, so there's our circuit card out of the machine, ready for us to do some repairs and get this machine back to operation. Now that we've got that off, we wanna get the power supply out. Power supply is right here. So we've got the cable off of there and we wanna get this power supply out so that we can get the circuit card out of there as well. So we're going back to the bottom, T20, and then it's these two. These have been historically really hard, really difficult to unscrew for some reason, especially using left arm. I'm right-handed. While I'm doing this, I'm pushing on the actual power supply to keep it from pushing in. Uh, that's how you end up breaking those tabs and that's why I don't do this before I take the machine apart. this out you have to go this way because your uh, 
all your plugs and everything are sticking out there. And then it comes right out. So you can pull this off. Just remember how it was on there. Pull that off. And then this will come apart and about 100% of these have some sort of damage. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, Cause I don't think I do that as I pull it apart. I think, I don't know, but they all have that kind of cracking around there. So if that happens to you, that's kind of a, a normal thing. And what I'll do is I'll put a little super glue in there to, to strengthen it up. And then here we go. Here's our power supply. Power supply board is out. So remember, you got a connector here in the back. Red goes down, and there's two little tiny holes in this board right here. That's where that goes. Some people pull this off, they don't realize there's a connector here, and then their motor doesn't work. So that goes in there. So don't forget when you're aligning this little spring tension bar is that this little piece on the bottom is what pushes that little MOSFET against the frame because that MOSFET gets a lot of heat generated inside of it. And the other thing is since this is a spring, you want to alternate when you tighten these screws and don't tighten one down all the way. Because uh, if you do that, you're going to have uneven pressure on your board and it could crack something. The whole idea of the spring is to hold this copper. This is basically removing the heat from all these chips on the drive section of this board. And taking that and pushing it against the big metal frame of the machines to remove that heat away from the board. So we're getting close to our moment of truth. Got a few wires to hook up. So if you remember the upper, so these two are the same kind of connector, uh, the, the two with the four wires, the two cables that have four wires same type of connector and a lot of people want to connect this to the upper one because it's the upper cable but it doesn't it it's the connects to the lower <clears throat> and then the one that comes from the bottom connects to the upper one and then you got the really long one and this one Good thing is that a lot of these just kind of fall into place. Don't forget this one down here. Okay, and then the rest of these connections that get made. So some of these don't have anything on them. But the rest of them, the rest of them that get made, are from.
the front panel over there, which is next. So we got the machine all together. We're getting ready to test it. And if you'll notice, I just put the front cover on. I didn't put the back cover on. We still have access here to get to things if we need to. And that's something you wanna make sure is when you're testing, you don't have a full thing together. If you want to test it before actually putting the front cover all the way on, what I do is I will have a two by four down here and I'll have this sitting on the two by four, the front panel, so that it's away. Because when you turn this on, you're gonna have the needle moving around and you're gonna have electronics that are live and you want all those connections to be made up and you can't get very far. So what I do is I'll set it on a little two by four right here so that it's away and the things can move down here and up here and it's not gonna affect or break anything while it's going through that test. But uh, the best way to go is just to put it, the front cover on all the way and then do your test. So we're gonna plug it in and see how we're doing. And here we go. All right, it's looking good. Let's turn off a couple of these lights or turn them down a little bit so that you can see the screen. There we go, now you can see the screen a little bit better. This machine appears to be working. Um, I don't have the foot pedal for this one, but you can, you can go through here and start and stop this way. And we are working there. We can test out. So now we're testing some of these buttons to make sure they're plugged in correctly. It will cut. Touch screen is working. So it's looking like we have a machine that works. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put it back all the way together. And then we're gonna try and sew with it and go with that. But for this video, we're done because you don't need to see me sew on a sewing machine. You've seen that before and we don't need to do it again. And for the uh, for those of you that have been paying attention, you might notice that this is a different machine. And I had a little, um, um, my other test machine that I got has some other problems with it. So I couldn't get the retest to work right. So here we go. This one right here just got fixed and it's ready to go back to a customer and sew some more.